In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own Cat6 cable. Okay, before we get started, we need to grab some tools. You're going to need something that will cut small wires precisely. I like these flush cutters here, they're about $10 on Amazon, but my set of wire strippers also has a pretty good cutting blade on it. You're definitely going to need a crimping tool. This one supports RJ45 and RJ11 for phone jacks, but a tool like this works really well. It even has blades in it, I just don't like to use it that much, but you definitely need this to crimp the connectors on. You can also get a jar of these RJ45 connectors that we're going to be using, or a small bag on Amazon. You can grab yourself a jar of RJ45 connectors on Amazon. We're going to need two of these obviously, but it doesn't hurt to have some spares, especially when you're still learning how to crimp and the exact length of the wires we're going to be cutting. Alright, let's get started. We're going to take about an inch away from the end and we're going to lightly put some pressure and then I'm going to spin it around because we don't want to cut the small conductors inside. And there. Now there's going to be four pairs of wires inside. I'm going to be separating all of them into individual wires. If you use cable that has good copper wire in it, it's really easy to shape with a little bit of pressure and just wiggle it. All right, now we have to line up all these conductors in the correct order, and then we're gonna shape them in that order so it'll be easier to cut them and place them into the RJ45 fitting. Now the order is determined by a standard. The most common standard is, I believe it's TIA568B. Um, there's an A standard that has a different color arrangement, but honestly, it's really not that important if you're just making cables for yourself, um, as long as it's consistent on both ends, um, which wire goes where. So I'm going to be taking individual wires and shaping them as we go. Now what I'm doing here to keep these together is I am bending them up and down to shape any of the curves out of the wires. So we have orange, white, orange. Now we need green, white. Green, white, blue. Blue, white. Brown, white. Brown. Now I'm shaping them all together as a set. Now let's check, starting from the left, orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. So now we're going to have to determine the length that we want to cut. So I like to use from my cuticle to the end of my nail. You can find what works for you, but that length is usually ideal for me. When I push the wires after they're cut into the fitting. These wires do recede a little bit back into the jacket, and that amount is usually just enough to have this jacket in that fitting the way I'd like it. So I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. Now this usually does make a bit of a mess. And now you can see how much we have out, about the length of my nail. Now with orange white on the left and brown all the way on the right, you're going to have your RJ45 connector upside down because that's the top side. You're going to have it upside down and you're going to slowly put all those wires in there while holding them as still as you can so they all go in and you could rock this connector a little bit. push. 
Now I'm just going to check to make sure all of our conductors are in position. And I do see all eight pushed up against the end of the jack, which is important. We want to make sure those teeth, those metal teeth, pierce those conductors when we crimp it. All right, now I'm going to use the tool. This is the easiest part. So this tool has an opening that you can pretty much tell for our fitting. And I'm going to give a good squeeze and check your work. So I could see from my end that the metal teeth have pierced the conductors. I know that might be a bit difficult to see, but if you memorize where their positions were before and where they are after, you know that the prongs at the top are now inside that protective coat that they were in before. All right, now go ahead and repeat this process on the other side, and then we'll test our cable. All right, time to test our cable. If you don't have a fancy LAN tester, that's okay. You could just plug it into your computer, plug it into a switch, router, whatever. Um, if you're using CAT6 and a modern device, it should negotiate a gigabit speed. Um, you could usually check this in the network settings, what speed it's running at. You want a thousand megabits per second on any modern device. The reason why I say that is because if you don't have a tester like this, you could still have one pair that's not wired correctly and it will still work, but it will only run at a hundred megabits speed. And as you can see, everything turned out great. Hopefully it turned out the same on your guys's. And thank you again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you guys like this sort of content. It lets me know to uh, keep on pursuing and posting videos. All right, have a good one.